can science actually provide absolute answers? And um, I suspect that the word absolute there might be the, the heart of this question. Um, I don't know if any of you immediately, none of you seems to be leaping at the screen. Uh, Go on, well, I, can, I can certainly uh, answer that because that completely relates to what I was just saying. So let me just go into a little bit more into what I mean by effective. An effective theory is based on the idea that at any given time, we've measured certain things in a certain regime of parameters, maybe a certain distance regime, a certain energy regime, a certain um, whatever uh, size regime. Um, and we can make predictions, we can make successful predictions, we can have theories about that regime of parameters. Now, mind you, that regime of parameters becomes bigger and bigger as we expand our measurements, as we look at more things. But we have this very, and, and those answers are correct, up to the accuracy with which we've measured things. So it could be that either by measuring things more accurately or by moving to a different regime, we can find that our predictions were not absolute, as you put it. They're not precise, but they were precise enough for everything we had to do, precise enough to send a man to the moon, but maybe it could get more precise and that would be irrelevant to anything we see today, which is why we're not, we haven't measured that yet. Now that, so, I think it's very comforting and very comfortable and helps get around a lot of these silly debates to admit that that's the way all knowledge works. We base it on what we've seen, what we've observed. We put it together into theories. We can make predictions. Uh, science is unique in that we can usually say the accuracy with which we trust the predictions and then allow things to evolve beyond that. So to say there's an absolute is unnecessary in all of this. We don't even have to ask that question. We, all we have to do is ask the question, is it, is it good enough for what we're trying to do in whatever we're trying to predict, whatever we're trying to build? And that's the sense in which science is brilliantly successful. And it's also brilliantly successful in telling us when we don't have absolute things. I mean, what we're doing in particle physics is we're looking for deviations from this, what we call the standard model. That's what tells us how to go beyond. It doesn't mean the standard model is wrong. It tells us that there could be a richer structure that underlies it. And that's the way science can evolve. Can, can, I, just, can I just say here, I, I think this term absolute is, is again, not being very helpful. Um, does, do, 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 do scientists come up sometimes with true, correct answers to certain questions? Yes, they do. Um, what's supposed to be absolute is, is, is sometimes the evidence that those answers are correct it leaves them beyond any what we would call any reasonable doubt. Um, DNA has a double helix structure. That's a really important discovery. It, it, um, if you're worried about COVID, we know it's a virus, right? We got the sequence very quickly. Those are, not, those are really not useful things that anyone can question. Um, high level theoretical physics is an entirely different matter. You're, you, you're not gonna ever be sure you have that nailed down exactly right but we sure do know a lot of stuff and we know it beyond any No, reason. but I'm saying, let me just to be clear, even for something like a virus, yes, it's a virus, but maybe it's a virus interacting with something else. So the virus is an approximation to how we should be thinking about it. Of course, it's an extremely excellent approximation, just the way the standard model is an extremely excellent approximation. So you're right that when we're really at the edge of, of knowledge, of course, then these effective theories are breaking down in ways that we can manifest. But there's a lot of stuff in physics that's on as solid ground as the kind of stuff that you just mentioned. And so I don't mean to say that that doesn't exist. I'm just saying that if we do more measurements, maybe we, I mean, obviously it acts like a virus. There's no question about it, but there are other things that we can learn about it that will enhance our knowledge of what it is and how it's interacting and how it takes it interacts with its environment, for example. Right. I, I, COVID just is a virus. I mean, there are, lots of, there are lots of issues that go into how it affects the biological mechanism. And a lot of things can come into that in environmental factors, but it just is a virus. And we know a lot about its structure and so on. I don't think it's all that helpful to spread a kind of general skepticism over everything, because then that will affect people will say, oh, I can always question anything. Um, at a certain point, there's some things that it's not really reasonable to question. And there are other things that it is perfectly reasonable to question. And you have to look at each individual case. Um, that's why I think I, I don't want a bumper sticker that says 
science is X. I mean, then you even have the question, what counts as science? We don't think that astrology is science. We have good reasons not to think that, but you can't also just think that science is some sticker you can stick on things that suddenly makes it valid or invalid or whatever. Um, yeah, you know. I think in this regard that, uh, you know, what, what scientists can do is to talk about where there is consensus. You know, for example, this COVID thing is a virus. There's, there's no serious scientist questions that. And then the scientists can then say, so that's our common ground, but here are the, here are the details where we might dis disagree, where we might disagree on the right interventions and, 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 and so forth. It, it's, it requires a little bit more attention from the public to, to understand these, these nuances. But if, if science, scientists could do this, I think it also could help with political discourse to you know, figure out where do we agree <laughs> and then where, where do we disagree and, and, and why, what are the substantive issues? Um, so scientists would, would say there are no question about certain interventions for the virus and certain things, you know, there's no question about that. Uh, then the details about specific details about masks and so forth, how effective those might be in different circumstances. There could be debate among scientists on those on those details. And then then the public might be uh, told, look, we don't have the absolute answer here, but 90 percent of the scientists who've done this work think such and such, you know, masks in this situation, but not in that. And 10 percent disagree. So right now, you know, the 10 percent might be right. But right now we have to go with the 90 percent. Um, and, you know, in two years from now, we might find something different. So I just I mean, one thing that we do, though, often is we um, we say people, we say 90 percent of the people. But what would also be very useful is that 90 percent of of the time it was found that this works um, rather than make it a, a question of consensus or people's opinion. And, and that is actually sometimes a problem with the way science is presented. It's presented as so-and-so says this. And really, it's something based on something. And often, when we talk to the public, people are afraid to say what the data is because they won't necessarily understand it. And, and this goes back to, to talking about providing evidence. Um, there, are, there are questions. I mean, really, um, and in terms of interventions, I don't think there was a single intervention that wasn't questioned in this country by someone. I mean, so what we really need is a better educational system. To continue watching this video, click the link in the top left or in the description below. Or visit iai.tv for more debates and talks from the world's leading thinkers on today's biggest ideas.